We're here with Gareth Evans, who is, of course, one of our major stars at Fright Fest Glasgow when he turned up with The Raid and the lead actor, which was just great. But now he's back because he came here with VHS2 because his section in that is one of the best of the lot. Gareth, thank you thank for you. coming along. So come on, let's go through the whole VHS2 thing. Okay. Right, the first film, obviously, and then you got involved in the second. So how did they just come to you and they went, right, you, we need yeah. you in it? Um, basically, like what happened was we... Like we had like kind of like almost like a, a a little mini filmmakers community when we did the uh, Midnight Madness, and so mm -hmm. when we did the raid there, like I got to know Adam and Simon who did your next because we were both screened at the same time, and then uh, Roxanne and Brad were there as well, and so we kind of all kind of hung out together and we all stayed friends since then. They went off and did VHS one, and then I think shortly after it screened in Sundance, they already wanted to do VHS two, so they contacted me and said I like, was I interested in doing uh, one of the segments for it. And yeah, I was curious by it, interested in it, but I had a little bit of, uh, of anxiety. Almost oh, swore then. I <laughs> swear. Bit, it's we fine, yeah? Swear. Okay. I had a lot of fucking anxiety because I was like, <laughs> really nervous about like, because I, I knew I could do action okay, but I wasn't sure about horror yet. Like we kind of teased at it a little bit in the raid. We put a few little horror genre elements in there, but never something which is full on horror. And so um, I found out afterwards that they'd also contacted uh, Timo, like who was mm. a really good friend of mine since I moved to Indonesia. And he's a horror guy, like, you know, you, you guys scream macabre and everything else. And so, yeah, uh, I contacted him and he was, we'd always been looking for something to collaborate on. And this seemed like the perfect fit, like a perfect opportunity for us to experiment with collaboration and also figure out what we could do with the POV, like, found footage format. Mm. But they didn't ask you to be involved in VHS, just... The Not the first one, no. Because you were busy the second or something, you were just... um, I guess so. I think, yeah, I was, I was off, we were doing promo and stuff for the radio. Oh, okay. But, so. but I think VHS had been, like, in gestation before uh, then. It was they, quite was... a while before, yeah. Oh. So how did you come up with the idea for your segment? Well, I didn't. Like, i got to oh. give complete credit to Timo for that one, because he was the one that had the whole, like, branch out of the storyline. He, he came up to me, and we were, we were trying to figure out ideas for it, and I didn't really have anything at that point. And he said, like, oh, what if we do something about, like, journalists that go into this cult group on the Day of Reckoning? And then straight away I was like, that's brilliant. This is a genius mm -hmm. idea. Let's do that. And then, like, because Timo has this, like, encyclopedic knowledge of everything, uh, encyclopedic knowledge of everything to do with the horror genre in terms of film, but then also, like, real-life horror. And so he starts, like, telling me about, like, the Jonestown mask. And I knew little bits about it, but I never really read into it. And he starts playing me like this audio clip of like well, the actual day of it when he gives out this, fi when yeah, he this final yeah, sermon. Yeah. And it terrified me. It was horrible. It was nasty. Mm. It was really creepy to hear like kids in the background and stuff like that. It just freaked me out. And so um, like I was like, well, there's plenty of stuff that we can mine from this to kind of make our segment. But one of my biggest concern was like, you know, this is something if you treat it in like terms of that real life context. That it becomes more about like pain and suffering and it's like it's like you know how, how are we going to do a 20 30 minute thrill ride short for an anthology but touch on those subjects and so we started looking at like ways that we could incorporate different elements that would help us like boost up the adrenaline and make it for want of a better word entertaining as well mm. and so then we started introducing like things like the occult and like you know satanic things and then the idea of hell breaking loose and what if one of those whack jobs that believes he can open up the gates of hell can and so then by that happening, it, it opened it up because you kind of, you ask the audience to suspend their disbelief a little bit further and then it allows you to kind of play it a little bit looser with the elements and it made us be able to kind of soften the blow of, of, of mass suicides and kids mm. drinking chocolate milk. Mm. So like it, it, we were able to kind of twist it into this sort of like twisted adrenaline rush. Do you know going in the wraparound story? Not that it makes any difference. No, we didn't. Like, uh, um, we, we had a, a big idea of like uh, other people's stories, like, like, like uh, Jason's one and Adam's one and then uh, Eduardo and Greg's one. Right. We, we knew what they were doing. Um, we all kind of, we just come up with our pitch and then send it in. And I think like the, the, the check-in process was just to make sure that like none of us were doing anything that kind of crossed over yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you, know, you don't want to have two things about cults in there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and the only notes that really came back were more on the basis of like what would be the shooting format because I know Eduardo's was very specifically like a GoPro uh, shot one and then so was Jason's. And then so for us, then we were like, okay, well, we wanted to use GoPro, but then we asked if we could use it sparingly because they didn't want the whole film to look the same from beginning right. to end. So we started looking at different technology then to kind of figure out what we could use. Sure, sure. Now yours is the longest story in the whole lot. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was, did you go in again knowing, did they give you an optimum sort of time? They, yeah, they, they were really good to us. Like they gave us a lot of freedom because like we got told originally at the start, 20 minutes, 25 tops. Um, and then we're writing and we start getting carried away and then we end up having like a 32 page script and we're like, 
can't bring this in at 20, 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Cause you know, usually if there's a page a minute, but when it's horror or action, it's a lot longer. Mm. Like, like the raid script was like about 70 pages, 72 pages. That was it. It was 101 minutes on screen. So then I was done because I, we got like two paragraph descriptions and stuff, which I know is going to pad out for three minutes maybe. And so our first cut came in at 45 minutes long. And then we were starting to trim bits away. And like, it was mostly the mostly front heavy in terms of the edits. We like, we took out some of the character build and stuff to kind of get to the, the compound yeah. a lot quicker. Mm. But um, we felt we needed that breathing space because what we wanted to do uh, was to set up the, the structure, the geography of that, that compound. So you go in slowly, you go in and learn all these different corridors, see these different rooms, see these different characters and where they're positioned. So that when all hell breaks loose and we go chaotic and run back out through there, you know that around that corner, there's going to be a classroom full of kids. In that room, there's a group of guys. In this room, there's a, a couple. Um, and there's all these different uh, like you know, things that where like it doesn't matter how much we move and how much we kind of create chaos and rampage through it, you still get an understanding of the geography then. So you're still mm-hmm. clear in your head. And, and having said that, though, yours is perhaps the best, best part of the segment, really, isn't it? I can't say that. Oh, you can't say that. <laughs> Is anybody in, in your bit um, famous? Are they Indonesian yeah, famous? Yeah, actually, yeah, in Indonesia. Like, this is the thing. Like, uh, it's kind of strange because, like, the three, the, 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 the journalists are all well-known. Like, they're all, they're all, like, really well-known in terms of the industry there. I mean, um, and then the, the father of the compound, like, you know, he, uh, his name's Epi Kusnanda. He's an amazing, amazing actor. Um, he, before he worked with me and Timo, like, he was really well-known for doing, like, a comedy TV show. He played a comedy character and, you know, just that was it, like slapstick stuff. And then Timo cast him as a pedophile jerking off in El for Libido. And then suddenly we cast him as this uh, pedophile like, leader of a, of a, <laughs> a religious cult. Um, and now suddenly he's this like character actor now. And suddenly he's like doing all these th- these things with us and we're, we're finding more and more shady characters for him to do. And we just love him to bits. Like he brought so much to the project. Right. I mean, how... how- what does the Indonesian film industry think about you? I mean, you know, you go along there, you sort of shake it up a bit. I mean, how do they they cope with you? Do they like it? Do they not like it? Um, yeah, I mean, vast majority of like I've had a lot of support since I started there. Um, there were a few like nationalistic press when I first started when I did Maranta. We did our, our announcement that we were going to go into production. They didn't like the idea of like a foreigner going out there to mess with their mm. culture and heritage, which is understandable. But um, to be honest, the majority of people have kind of supported me through it. And like in terms of the film industry too, like a lot of people supported us too. Um, you know, it's been, it's been yeah, a big adventure really since we started. Uh, in terms of this film though, there's no way it'll play in Indonesia. There's no way at all. It, it won't pass censorship. Oh, I see. Um, and okay. I guess that was kind of what made Part me of the reason. Timo right. felt liberated by it. Is that idea we didn't have to think about what the Indonesian censorship would make of it. Because it was for America, it was for UK, it was for like outside. Sure. So we just went crazy with it. And when was the first time you actually saw the whole film put together and what was your first impression? Well, I first saw it on a screener DVD, you know, and, then, ah. and like, so like, I, I, like they sent us over a screener DVD so we could see how it was all cut together. Um, but, you know, watching it at home on my own is different from being mm. able to experience it. Like last night, that was the first time I got to see it with an audience. Mm. And, you know, there's a huge crowd and like there's a great screen, amazing mm. venue. And so like to kind of see it all polished and put together mm. and with the sound, it was, it was really fun. It was really great. Mm. Well, of course, not only that, you brought along the first clips of the, uh-huh. of the raid too, which mm-hmm. we thank you for. Very, I mean, that looks fantastic, and that really went down. I don't know if you've seen Twitter today, but it's yeah. like gone mental. Isn't it was it? fun. It was really good. I was I, I was nervous as hell before the clip played because I was like, oh shit, how are they going to respond? But no, I've been really happy to see. Like, sure. And you've finished the raid too. Finished shooting now. Yeah. So I'm I'm just getting it together. Yeah. And you have to deliver it when? Um, we're looking to finish everything on it, like by middle of January next oh, year. That's the, that's the goal line for it. And the, the plan for that is to launch can or something? Uh, or? Maybe before that. We're, maybe, hopefully we might be able to do something in January, uh, possibly. But sure. we, we'll see. It, de- it all depends on finishing it in time. Sure. And beyond that, is there any other projects? Um, yeah, I'm actually working with Timo again. Uh, so he's going to direct and I'm going to produce for him. Uh, we're going to do a neo noir hitman thriller in Indonesia called The Night Comes For Us. And so uh, Joe Taslim, who was in the first raid and ended up doing Fast Six, 
we've we've got him just before he became super popular so we can still afford him um, uh-huh. and it's like it's like, it's kind of like tailor-made for him and then yayan who played mad dog and the raid he'll be in it as well and so it's kind of kind of using some of our stable of actors that we worked with before to tell this like really crazy action movie and timo wants to do action now right so like i've crossed over for horror with him now he's crossed over to action back. with me yeah. right, right right well listen i mean it was great thanks very much and thanks the so much she really played well for us last night and we're really pleased gareth evans <laughs> Thank <music> you.